Welcome to the Board of Education's work session. May I have a motion to go into closed session? I move that we move into closed session pursuant to the general provision Article 3-305 and 3-104. I move we go into closed session to discuss an administrative function to consider matters that relate to negotiations and to consult with counsel. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. We will be back in approximately half an hour. <coughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Board of Education work session. Please stand and repeat the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll continue with the budget presentation. Ms. Lane Griff, it's all yours. Okay. Um, I believe the last time we met, we were going through the budget book. Um, we stopped on page 11. I don't know if you want to pick up there. Um, in the meantime, I have sent out information regarding what each of the increases in the budget are and it's a right. very it. brief explanation as to what those increases right. were. Got it. Um, so do we want to just march through the, the budget book and go from there? I, I think so. Okay. Is everybody on board with that? Another paper copy? No, of your increase. Just what you have on board. Um, there is a, <laughs> there is, there's a, paper. <laughs> okay, Excuse uh, me. we left off on page 11, which was mid-level administration. I think we completed our discussion on this, on the assistant principals. We can move forward. Yes. On page 12, the only increase that we have there is in mileage and travel, which I think we've discussed several different times. And that's essentially it for mid-level administration. I had a question on, was it mid-level? Hold on, let me just double check. Mm -hmm. Nope, it's not. Never mind. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. Okay. Um, then we go into instruction, and of course this is where the meat of the budget is, so I anticipate a lot of questions and conversation regarding this. Um, the first item on page 14 is teachers full and part-time. We have requested eight additional positions, and they are one at Kennard Elementary School, one at Kent Island Elementary School, an English language arts at Stevensville Middle School, a math at Centerville Middle School, a computer um, teacher at Queen Anne's County High School, and an English language arts slash social studies at Queen Anne's County High School. So two of those we've cut out. So we've resolved the issue at Stevensville, so you can um, eliminate that one. And we've resolved the issue at Kennard, so we can eliminate that one. What was the one in between those? Kennard, what was second? I'm sorry, I missed it before Stevensville. Kent Island Elementary Kent Island. School. Okay. So now we're down to four positions? And so we started with eight, is that correct? We started with eight. Why did I have six down? Um, well, we had six originally, and then we added two for the virtual academy. Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> Can I just... So we're back to six. Where is that at on my book? I'm, I'm on page 14, correct? We're on page 14. It's the first item there. Okay. We have 522.68 positions, yes. and included in that are these eight positions. Okay. Okay, and under that is... Is that under classroom teachers? We're taking two off? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what does that reduce? Um, each position is in here. 
well, it's sixty thousand dollars on this particular line, right? Sixty thousand dollars each. Yes. But then there's also a residual effect that's going to happen back in fixed charges with health insurance and all the payroll taxes and whatnot. So it ends up working out to be overall reduction in the budget about eighty thousand dollars per <clears throat> per each teaching. Position. Okay, and that we eliminated two, so I'm just trying to keep track. So 160. Okay. Then. All right. So I'm sorry to be redundant. We took care of Kennard. We still have Ken Allen Elementary on the table. We took care of Stevensville. We still have Centerville Middle. We still have a computer teacher at Queen Anne's County High School and an English studies teacher at Queen Anne's County High School. What two am I missing? And then the two virtual. for the virtual academy. Oh, virtual academy. academy. I'm sorry. That's, thank you very much. Okay. And since uh, when we were talking about mid-level administration, we decided that we were not going to be moving the teacher specialists to assistant mm -hmm, principals, right. those will come back into this line right. item. And then also um, the APA program manager will come back into this line item. What do you mean we come back in? Because it was taken out because they were making them the, the assistant principals, teacher specialists, so they took out Oh, teacher specialist location. Yeah, and then okay. moved so it. But the bottom line is this has same. teacher right. specialist four. So what are we doing? We're going back to it will 12? go back to twelve. Twelve. Okay. Yes. So I'm just curious, how did you solve the the two teachers that you took off the list? Within you mean Dr. The King, Kennard and the Kennard, how did you solve that Kennard? Because and Kennard work? has a um, sort of a STEM lab kind of a situation. That position was originally a PE or some, some cultural arts request, but they ended up using it in that way. That doesn't have to be because the standards that are taught in that class are now in the science curriculum. Oh, okay. So that teacher position okay. can go back to fill the need for the one that she requested. So we're even there. Okay. Stevensville, they had a teacher who uh, was minimally, um, um, who had low class numbers in a, in a particular class. And that position or that class is going to be eliminated. And so that position can be used to fill the vacancy that is being requested. Okay. So you're filling up the need that you had. Exactly. But in a Reallocating. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So the computer teacher that would be added would be in addition and it would help with the pathway being equitable at Queen Anne's County High School versus Ken Island High School not not necessarily I mean we are asking for that isn't that the same the computer science so if the that doesn't science. happen what my job was to do is in the event that we could not get the position because it's been requested for a number of years is to figure out how to, how ha to make, make it, it happen, happen with the positions that we currently have right. and so we have done that if we need to do that right. Right. but my point in my last conversation about this was that those teachers <coughs> who are certificated to teach computer science are already teaching full loads of something else. Right. Right. And so, so that's to gonna create a bit of juggling in the right. schedule. And I don't know what the outcome is going to be of that, but the bottom line is that we need to offer computer science and we have the ability to do that. Right. Not exactly sure of the fallout, have to get with the principal on whatever other courses those teachers are currently teaching. Right. And this will be for all four grades at the high school or just our freshmen? No, no, no. This all is for grades. Mm -hmm. Anyone yes. can come yes. into yes. it, even as a senior. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that we've already said that that was on the agenda to, to do that. Right. I mean, and that yeah, should we be included in our budget. That should be included yeah, in the that. budget yes, for that teacher. I would have a oh, yeah, we could definitely yeah. fight. No, that's that's easy already to fight down to Ken Island yeah. High School. Right. That's, right. And that's what parents are Absolutely. Right. And so uh, I'm all for putting that teacher. Yes. Definitely <laughs> to Queen Eads County High School. My question about adding a teacher is the virtual school because I know we had a conversation about maybe not doing it this budget session. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it? Did we ever decide if we were going to go ahead with that or not? Like that's what I was. I'm confused on. No, we did not decide that we were okay. going to go ahead with that. I think that the position you were in last time is that you really wanted some more homework done on that. Okay. And we could, you know, have some conversation about that and, and move forward in, in the next okay. request. That's, I that's just wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that okay so I mean you know I'm not putting words in your mouth but no no those could be two positions that you decided not to to find right right and that we could then we have a spot for that high school teacher and 
one of the other ones. Mm -hmm. So. And if we didn't fund those, we'd be down to one to just a request of four, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that takes away the whole virtual academy request. Right. If, if, if we, we decide that, that we yeah, decide because the, it shows far. up multiple places, it like does. the m materials of instruction right. yeah. and everything. Yep. And okay. Okay, um, the next area is instructional assistants and tutors. And um, what I have included here, there's a $47,000 increase. And we were looking at trying to improve the hourly rates yes. on the tutors, uh, minority achievement coordinators, the life skills instructors, um, well, both e it's ESOL reading and math tutors. So, there's a $14,000 increase for that in here, and then there's salary improvements for the rest of the school systems that are in this um, area of the budget. The 14 is, that's the only thing that's of the 47? 14,750 of the 47 is for hourly um, Changes wage in improvements. Wages, okay. Yes. okay. And then substitutes. Um, all of this, all $60,000 of this would be for hourly wage improvements. All 60? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the, we were looking at, that was looking at um, increasing by a dollar an hour mm -hmm. for each of the different, depending on what their certification was. Mm -hmm. So this does not include the, um, anything to, to do with the um, sick leave addition? The new sick leave Lord. No. Okay. This this is just the hourly rate. So just the lowest the hourly, rate. hourly rate right now I think we're paying is eleven twenty five. Right. And, and so this would increase each so it's eleven twenty five, twelve twenty five, depending upon your education. So okay. this would increase it to twelve twenty five, thirteen twenty five, right? Right. And the selling improvement steps in COLA is what the impact will be after we would grant the fourteen thousand on top of Well substitutes this, probably aren't included in that. No, no, I'm I'm for that particular yeah. line item where it says 33000 yes. for salary improvement, mm -hmm. there are 27 um, and a half people in that category, so that will be the salary improvement. Okay, that's what that I was making sure. People. Yes. That will be their steps in okay. that COLA. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, then we're What's the going, just quick, excuse me. going rate on substitutes like around our, like, like Anne Arundel, Talbot, around <clears throat> our county? about what is the substitute rate? Um, well, we know that um, everyone uh, is slightly higher than we are, uh, and now it's not just what they're getting as substitutes, it's the fact that Walmart just increased to $11 an hour. I mean, it's, it's a, um, you know, Hardee's is, is $12 an hour. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're struggling to get people to come in for substitute jobs and five-hour para jobs and all of that so and they're all everyone's preparing to increase their rates so mm -hmm. we're just trying to hold the line with this increase with a dollar increase yeah. so the base the lowest uh, substitute cost used to be 1050 i thought when i was doing it what is the lowest substitute 11, I think it's 11 and a quarter oh it is i the think lowest so. is 11 and a quarter. okay but minimum wage goes up july 1st to 1010 all right so you know we've we've tracked all this and we know we're just holding the line Okay, so that substitutes the next line item there is um, secretarial and clerical. And we had some changes in positions where people who okay. um, had some experience left, and that's why this is a decrease. But there, I do have built in here, <coughs> excuse me, for those nine people that their steps in there. Um, that, so that would be kind of like their attrition we're getting, the yes. 8,000? Okay. Exactly. Um, and then other instructional positions. Um, this is where we have our home hospital, our extra duty, um, mentors, those types of activities. And we need to increase this, and this was based on, we have a $30,000 increase in here. Um, 30,000 of that is for hourly rate improvements, mostly for the home hospital teachers because we're having a terribly difficult time getting home hospital teachers. And then a little bit of 
salary improvement for the 0.2 person that's included in this area. I think it's important to note, especially in everything, and it's not always the case, our actual spending in 2017 was considerably higher than what our request for 2019 is even close to. So we took a cut from 17 to 18. And we may be asking for an increase in 19, but it's nowhere near what it was two years ago. And so the other thing that we have to remember is that e even if we are funded at maintenance of effort, which is whatever, you know, based on the number of students, that's level funding, but the cost of doing business continues to increase. Absolutely. And so we function at a deficit right off the bat yes. when we are only funded at maintenance of efforts. Yes. I have a little video that I'm going to share with you um, that I think is going to be beneficial to the public if they see how that works. Right, right. It's a $200,000 difference in a two-year period of time. What we're asking as opposed to what we used to get. Um, That's huge. Uh, do you, you used to have a slide, and I was trying to find it in your presentation, on basic cost of doing business that you can't do anything about, like like the health care mm -hmm. was on there. And I looked at that, but I didn't see the other things, which is the cost of, of um, the contracts that went up. Did you have a slide just on that? I meant to ask you if it didn't. Um, I mean, I didn't see it in your presentation. We did not. Because that's a bottom line number we can't do anything about. We have to pay. I see license agreements under something, but that's under new requests. This is in your presentation. Right. Um, I thought that there was a slide. Okay. I'm trying to find well, the presentation. I'm sorry to call it on you now. I just. That's uh, okay. Um, because you said health care has gone up. That's a definite. Health, health care went up, right. Um, we have to pay that. The consortium fee went up. We have to pay that. Presentation here real quick. <coughs> it's done Jan January 31st. Right. Um, um. We had in, I think it is. Not just based on the five-year trend. Right. This is slide 33 in the um, presentation. Shows where the estimated costs were, what the cost of a step was, what right. the cost of a 1% increase. It also had the health care. Um, and we anticipate that's a 4.5% increase. For active employees, that was going to be seven hundred and five thousand, and for retirees, it was going to be one fifty. Um, so that com all comes out to about a million dollars. Is what I f if you add all that, we're probably close to starting three three million. Three. Oh, I mean, starting yeah. just at the health care. I'm just talking so the, about the health. That. The health care is eight eight hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars. Right. Um, Five. So that's what I'm saying. That just those items are a million forty, not any salary increases or anything like that. Right. And then you have the bus contractors, that's included. Um, which is based on CPI, um, which <coughs> actually isn't out yet. It's supposed to be out today or tomorrow. I had estimated that at two percent. That was another hundred thousand dollars. The Midshore Special Ed Consortium was another twenty thousand dollars. So. Your estimate on the sick leave bill to right, sixty thousand, yeah. and just for, for the public, that's about a mil little over a million dollars and stuff we absolutely have to pay. You didn't have any contracts as far as like C um, computer contracts, and none of that has gone up as far as you know. These are bills that will come due no matter what. Yeah, so we absolutely have license agreements that we currently pay for our uh, oh, that academic up. program. Well, that's what I was wondering. Well, they, things that are going to be more than what we when we argue the M over MOE, we need over MOE. Oh, we yeah, absolutely do. We'll need to know that those numbers. It, it, that's right here. That's right here. Well, we have that as a line item. What we expect will be our our, our charges. And, and again. It's just a, a good 80,000 less than it was two years ago. I mean, we have to really be 
be cognizant of what we've actually spent two years ago. That was an actual amount. We were at a disadvantage last year because of funding deficit and had to cut back. Some of our increases are not even bringing us up to the spending level we were at two years ago. So we can't confuse every spending increase, especially when it's not even back to where it was two years ago. But we have to be cognizant that in the big scheme of things that goes into the pot, but it's not necessarily an increase from where we were spending two years ago. Yeah. That, and that how would that gets portrayed to our powers that be, uh, I'm not clear. We can use that as a discussion point, but mm -hmm. I am just think what, what we can solidly defend is, is anything agree. that we know is going to be extra. So just in the course of things, I, I kind of need to know that, that number, the bottom line number. What's extra and what's mandatory. What's mm -hmm. required mm -hmm. bills we're going to have to pay that are increased from mm -hmm. our MOE of last year. That way we can justify additional MOE. And keeping salary aside from that or a part we of know, that? We know what that might be. I mean, we, we know, know that's an increase. Yeah. We know salary. that. Yeah. At, just other, other than salary. Okay. So we have two items yeah. there that we and know we will increase. And we call that the cost of doing business. Yeah. Frank, Greg, and, yeah. and all that. Okay. That'll be helpful. <coughs> I, Thanks. I can put that together. So okay. That. That's okay with you, Dr. Kane. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, the next line item in the budget um, <coughs> is staff development activities and essentially th there's only two things that we increased here and that was the um, uh, the hourly rate for our curriculum writing um, currently we pay twenty one dollars and fifty cents an hour for staff to come in and do curriculum writing which compared to our colleagues across the state is apparently very low. And then the other is for mentors. And we've requested $35,000 additional in mentors. Um, How many mentors do we have? 16, I think, right? Yeah, but they service a lot of people because essentially for the first three years that a person is a teacher, they have a mentor right, but that's how many mentors we have is yeah, 16. Yeah, I think we have 16. But I, I was wondering that. I think you had said something about it before, and I couldn't remember. Yeah, and most of them are retired teachers. Right, exactly. And they'll service, you mm -hmm. know, right. four or five exactly. um, Schools different and, teachers. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. And then we pay for s school improvement teams. Is that because they meet <coughs> yes. hours? Is it the summer's meetings or is it um, it, Both. Some of them they meet in the evenings after school hours, and then um, generally they have a big meeting during the summertime to work on their school improvement plan. Does a teacher have a mentor um, after they're tenured, or is it is that I was understanding that a teacher had a mentor until they're tenured? Is that how? right? It's okay. for the first three years when okay. they're when they're a novice teacher, um, they just come to us, and it takes them three years to be tenured now. Just required by law. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Thank you. But is it required by law to use retired teachers? I mean, is there any way to use, like, if I was starting out teaching, it would be, I think, more conducive to have maybe a teacher in the same school, um, you know, to be able to bounce things off of, plus they're up on the current things and they know the kids in the system on how to, like, work with a grade. I mean, is there any way that it would be cost savings instead of adding more retired mentors that we could maybe do, you could do like a mentor stipend for in, in school? So uh, lots of principals, I did it as well um, as a principal. You'd use the people in your building to sort of informally mentor. But to meet the qualifications of this statute. It's too rigorous. Okay. You, gotcha. Because you'd have to do during the day. And during the day, I'm teaching when you're teaching. Gotcha. Okay. Possibly okay. Be on well, that, that explains it then. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's no there's no requirement in law that they have to be retired. Right. Gotcha. Okay. And that's it for the um, the salary part of the instructional program. Do you have any other questions regarding that? 
Okay, moving on to page 15. Um, consultants, we have increased um, our request for consultants, and part of that is due to PD having um, experts come in and be able to teach um, whatever program it is. I think most of this has to do with the new science curriculum. And then the other part is for the virtual academy. There's fifty thousand dollars in there for the virtual academy, or not quite fifty consultants for that. <clears throat> if so, majority of it is the virtual. About ten thousand is for the um, consultants for the PD. Mm -hmm. Do we have a bottom line amount that if we did not approve the virtual academy for this cycle? what that would take out of the budget or do I need to just go back and add it up myself <laughs> we do it's in there um, got 50 well, yeah. actually it's it's two, on that it's 50 uh, 21 or something two. we got it on that one slide that was yeah. in the yeah. presentation 291 291 mm -hmm. yeah yeah 291 and this would yeah. be included in that yeah. at 50. yes okay. if, we, if we take all that out okay mm -hmm. thank you but and uh, I thought maybe I'm um, just trying to put things in the puzzle together, but an investment in a virtual academy would be uh, an increase in revenue because we would have more pupils coming in. Is that well? That's kind an of assumption. Thinking? An assumption. Okay. Right, and that actually would be something that would happen the year after. Right. So it would be an investment oh, now, but it would be. Yeah, yeah. I did have a question down. about that. Um, the virtual academy, because you talked about revenue coming in from homeschool students. Would homeschool students then, if they applied to be part of the virtual academy would that would that mean that they would now have to take all of the state testing that is required because I'll tell you what worries me it is does. many 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 homeschool parents left the system due to testing yeah. so I'm not sure we're going to create that revenue that you're hoping for so it will be the same as, as our own students right mm -hmm. and so same as we, if it, so we, if we they test them but if a parent is choosing to not allow their child to test then they wouldn't it wouldn't so be mandatory from the state if, so if they're back into the school system and counted but they could graduate and not have to take those so tests. the bottom line is that just like our own students mm -hmm. and we have some parents who you know Opt reserve out. this right opt out. and I don't want to formally say opt out because that really is not the proper language okay. but if they elect to not allow their child to participate in testing then that is their choice but wasn't there isn't some of the testing required to graduate for high school students we know um, HSA is I thought you had um, yeah. a, HSA is, is a Parker graduation area. requirement mm -hmm. it's, it's so, if they would, so if they would elect out then they're they readiness. couldn't graduate from That's the homeschool right. program mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. what I'm saying is so then if they elected out from the testing they, they wouldn't graduate from if our virtual is, academy if it is a graduation requirement then it's required to get a diploma from Queen Anne's County okay. Public Okay, so that's what, yeah. that's if my main a, concern with right. bringing revenue in from homeschool parents because that was uh, I know many homeschool parents. I am not speaking for all of them, or but that is usually a point of contention of why they went homeschool was because and of sometimes testing. it is so yeah. that just is mm -hmm. uh, but that just concerns me with we don't want to assume that we're going to get a ton of homeschool parents if they know those reasons because. We, that's there might be a reason they the wouldn't come. So right. that, that's and, just, and my, just you know, yeah, it just that, and that'll be part of the study. I'm right. assuming. Exactly. Sometimes it's religious purposes. Sometimes it is right. health purposes. It, it's a variety of things. Again, you know, I, I had over 1,100 students in in Virginia. Sure. Some took the test. Some didn't take the test. Most of them did. Yeah. It just. And just were you depends. county there or district? State. It was open oh. to anybody in the state. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do have a question too. When we then realize the additional student for MOE purposes, are we then are we then required to have them meet our requirements at that point? I mean, that's what my yes. one of our yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. just like mm -hmm. any other student. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they will because yeah. we would get funding. From right. federal and state, and the understanding is that they're going that to they're do. going to do those testing. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. 
But that's when the parent comes in as to whether or not they're going to opt in or not to the virtual academy. Right. For various reasons. Not just that, but the big one, January. Okay. Okay. Um, the next line item is software licenses and training. And this, we show a large increase, but as um, Mrs. Harlow has said, if you look back to what we actually spent in prior years, we're right on target. Yeah, I think where you explained that somewhere in something that we took it from year-end money. Is that right? Right. What yeah. we've been doing the last, I'm going to say, four or five years anyway, mm -hmm. is at the end of the year, we try to buy those licenses ahead. Mm -hmm. And at some point in time, that's going to catch, up, catch with up with us. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I'm afraid that that might be this year. Yeah. So we really need to get that to item it, so. in the budget so yeah. that we're able to um, pay for those software licenses. That's one of those things that would be a cost of doing business to me. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We can't have the the going online without the licensing agreement. <laughs> right. Right. What would be right. the point? <laughs> right. The commissioners are very good about giving us the computers, so we right. don't need the, the right. remind them that. the cost. So we have, we currently we have $70,000 on that line. When we add up what the cost of all those licenses is, it's about 380000 So we've 310, <coughs> 332 is for those license agreements. And then the, the remainder of that is for the virtual academy. Um, on to materials of instruction, we're only requesting $48,000 increase and all of that is dealing with the virtual academy. Okay. Do we want a break now for lunch? It is uh, almost 1230 and then start back. It's fine. It's fine with me. Sure. <laughs> sure. That's fine with me, then. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be back at what time? You have to tell um, me. One o'clock. That's enough time to eat, isn't it? Okay. We'll be back at 1 p.m. then. Thank you, and welcome back to our board meeting uh, work session. And we're going to start with uh, where we finished off, Miss Robin. <laughs> okay, and um, we're going to start on page 16, and essentially we're going to move through this a little more quickly. Um, and if you don't have any questions on any particular page, then we're just going to move forward. So, page 16. There's only a couple increases. Are there any questions? Uh, no. I did one question. We're estimating dual enrollment to go up double. Right. Um, I think at the last board meeting we had a presentation <coughs> by Mr. Tolley about the early college academy, okay. so that's and that is that's what okay. we're expecting um, the increase to be for that. <clears throat> On page okay. 17, we only have one increase there for equipment. And that was for all schools? Yes, we constantly have a problem with yes. we need to replace cafeteria tables, we need some new furniture for a classroom, those kinds of things, and we really don't have any money. Our warehouse is empty. Right, our warehouse gotcha. is empty. Um, That's then just a compilation. Takes us over to special ed. On page 19, we have several increases there. Um, I did have a question on 19. It was the change in personnel. Um, it was 150,000. 552. What was what is that? Um, that is in for teachers. We had a change of personnel. Basically, we had some very senior teachers that um, retired. <laughs> Again, this is attrition. Then attrition. Okay, yes, thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. What line is that on? Um, um, line the third line down. Teachers full and part time. You see, oh, we gotcha. had a decrease. Mm -hmm. Okay. We had some <laughs> some very senior teachers that left okay. last year. Great. On okay. this page. Go ahead. I had a question about where it says um, in special ed salary improvement steps colo 141 334. Is that for a new? See, I don't see it on here, but I have it on my. Um, it's a combination. Um, if you look at the the spreadsheet that I sent you that had page 19. That's what I'm looking yeah. at. That's why I see that. Yeah, there's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar negative which okay was the attrition number okay and then the positive 141 which would be the salary increase for the, for the step right and, the and, and that's and for the 78.13 
Teacher? Employees. Yes. Employees. Okay. okay. Yes. Gotcha. And then I just didn't know where that the was. The net again. of those two. Okay. That That's what I thought, but I just wanted to, I wanted to check. <clears throat> right. Um, instructional assistance, we did include some um, improvements for the hourly rate in there. Any other questions on those? Mm. Carrie, if you have a question, please jump in. <coughs> okay. Excuse me. Then over to page 20, there's only the one increase there for the mileage rate. And is, are we changing the mileage rate because you said something about the, the rate had gone up? Yes, the federal government federal has changed. Federal government, okay. The I thought you did. Rate, and that's what so. most of our increases are reflective <clears throat> of. Yes. For the mileage. For the Not yes. just new spending, just right, increase just for doing this, business. Right, right. Gotcha. It, it went up a penny right. a mile mm -hmm. <clears throat> by the federal government. And we're required to follow that. Right. Right. And we stay pretty close to that every time, too. We, we don't overspend to that, my understanding has been. We are not okay. required to follow that, but that has been our past practice that we have always followed, whatever the federal rate was. Okay. Um, and then over to non, um, page 21, non-public placements. And we talked about this before. This is just the number of kids that we have and the special ed consortium. That would, to me, would be one of those um, kind of cost of doing business. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can we don't have any say so in it. I will. Oh. No. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. No way to gauge it. No way to know when it's going to change. Yeah. We just have to do our best to guesstimate. Right. And, ba do. and basically, the students that we currently have in Include placement them. are mm -hmm. um, middle school age students. Mm -hmm. So I anticipate, unless the families move out of the area be that we will have them <laughs> to continue for next right. year. Now, do we continue to support them till they're 21, just like we do our special ed groups here that stay in the county until they're 21? I am going to say special ed students, we're required to support. We, we're required 21. to support if they finish before then, but by law, till 21. Okay. But if they finish before Even then. Even our out of county students that we transport for so they're our education. students that we transfer mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. great depends Thank on you. their program uh -huh. and and how they're expected to graduate or gotcha. leave school they can be with us till they're 21 but grad when they get their cert say just a certificate then they're done they're done mm -hmm. okay some will get it at 18 some will get it at 19 mm -hmm. gotcha but we have till 21 <laughs> by law All right. Okay. Any other questions on special ed? Then we'll move to student personnel services. And there's essentially nothing in here except um, <coughs> wages, salary increases for steps and scales. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't remember a homeschool coordinator. Oh, it's not an increase. It's what we have now. All right, never mind. I'm Which brings us to health services. <clears throat> and I think the last time we met, we talked about nurses um, for APA, and that's the only um, increase with this, other than the salary increases. That's in included in this? Yes, ma'am. It was. It says we're it's school nurses. It says 15. It's only 14. Right. It's 56 and zero Was the 56 four. her salary? Yeah. Yes. It, well, that's that's both the her out the additional the increase for the current ones and her new salary. <coughs> Correct. Okay. Correct. And the new salary was put in there at thirty-five thousand dollars. <coughs> okay, right. that's good. Versus fifty, it was before. Correct. 50. Well, but then, oh, okay, okay. So it's at thirty-five, and then the salary improvement step color for all the other nurses. Correct. Right. It's okay. 21. Okay. Okay. Right. But you have to remember when I put that number up there before. That included all the fixed charges. So when we get back to the part of the budget that deals with payroll taxes mm -hmm. and health insurance and everything, there'll be a deduction there, they too. They are also. Okay. Because <clears throat> if, okay. if this <clears throat> position is taken out of the budget. Okay. 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 So the 55 is the entire cost of the person. Right. right. 35 yeah. salary, and then you do the health insurance and the mm -hmm. workers' okay. comp, unemployment, all that. Uh, okay? Okay. <laughs> Any other questions on health and health services? Which moves us over to transportation. 
<clears throat> um, <clears throat> there is an additional person requested in transportation that will be a new driver trainer and that will be one of the positions at the end of last year we got out of the budget when we were trying to make ends meet and then as far as drivers and bus assistants we have had to add additional positions in the current year because of our non-public placements so they would carry forward into the next year also. how much is the increase for the driver trainer 50 uh, 50, 50. 000. <clears throat> and really we're just kind of putting that back we used to have that we had to take it yes. out now we're putting I have it a back. question um, under bus contractors is that June 30th 2012 or where are you at right here on page 28 oh here that needs to be corrected <laughs> I was wondering <laughs> yeah because our contract our current contract um, initially extension. we signed a two-year contract and then we gave it a one-year extension so it goes through June 30th of 19 correct 2019 okay. 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 So I will make that correction and then that that increase there is based on the CPIU which actually isn't out yet but I've estimated it's at 2% so hopefully in the next day or so I'll know whether how close I was <coughs> Any other questions in transportation? Did increase the insurance, but that's, we've got numbers from MAVE as far as the group insurance pools, so that's where those numbers came from. <coughs> okay, which brings us to operations. Brings us over to page 32. We have salary increases there. Um, there are no additional positions requested in this area. Let's see. Salary increases. That's not included in for those maintenance positions? There? They're in the next section under maintenance. <coughs> <coughs> so 41126 is for the 64 positions. Yes. Okay. And there's actually um, the salary improvements actually a little bit higher than that because there was some change in personnel. So we had some attrition okay. that also played into that. So about seventy-seven thousand is going to be the overall okay. steps and cola increases in that area. And then the own over on page thirty-three. We've requested an increase in custodial supplies, and I think Mr. Pender has talked to us about that before with the green supplies that we're now required to, to use. Um, again, mileage rate, and then the increase in insurance based on May group insurance rates. That's the cost of doing business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes. And then on page 34, we've requested an increase in equipment. And that's basically just to continue to replace floor equipment, um, vacuums. vacuums, furnitures, a buffer for Mattapi. Thank you. <laughs> what was that? I got a grant for that. Okay, good. So Mattapi is down one of their machines, so they are scrubbing by hand. Mm. With a mop. Okay, and then that brings us over to maintenance. Um, we have requested two additional maintenance staff. We have not added to our maintenance staff since we built Kent Island High School, and we have certainly added additional square footage to our um, facilities over that period of time. So, uh, but didn't Kent Island come before the two, the Manapeak complex? Yes, it was about 17 years ago. Was the last time we were able to add. Maintenance person. How much is that per? So yeah. we have, what, where is we have that nine maintenance <coughs> workers, including Jim What's the cost of two staff members? And basically, what I would like to do is for each. one, hire another electrician, um, and another, I have it written as carpenter, but slash locksmith. Um, I can tell you that just in the past five years, there's been a 100% uh, increase in tickets for uh, the electrician part of it because now you have the, cola, uh, so that's the interactive boards. The LCD projectors, those things, and um, I mean, it's just that's a lot for one person with a 100% increase. And then 
with all the security cameras, um, access controls and all for the doors. I mean, you figure you got 7,700 kids walking through the doors every day. I mean, I could have one person just do doors, period. I mean, um, and don't get me wrong, they're doing, the guys are doing a great job. It's just, it's a lot. <coughs> and we're done the robust period of big construction. Now it's time to maintain the facility. So I'll put that request in for that. Yeah, you can go back and ask. It's an operation, so we're still in. Yeah. Okay, um, and then the rest of what's in salaries under maintenance is just the, the salary increases, the steps, and, and COLA. And, and why do we look for our maintenance contracts to increase 35000 over the sixty we approved last year? Um, you're talking about the last the mm -hmm. last, last item, item. line mm -hmm. in there. Um, that was the new floor finishes nope. that were required to use. Um, they do not as, emit as many VOCs, um, you know, what you're breathing in, but there is also a significant cost increase with that um, to do that. Why well, wasn't that listed? Contract. You're talking I'm about talking contract. about maintenance contracts down at the bottom, 35,000. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Service companies, equipment, PA system, fire alarms, elevators. I so, get all that. Yeah. So anyway, part of it's cost of doing business, but also um, say we, ha we hire a company to do our gym floors. They you know, come in, take them down to the wood, rebuild them back up. And when they want you to go to a water-based. Um, oh, I, I get that. I just wondered why that wasn't included in the list, I, I, the I gym will, floors. I will include I know it. we talked about it. I thought it was somewhere else. Yeah. No, I can include okay. that in the list. Gotcha. Well, actually, and it, it is. Wouldn't, it, I thought it was on included the sheet in the green sheet. In the green? Right. It's it's right here. It says new gym floor uh, finishes. Right. In the, yeah, but in I'm the, looking off the, in the one book. That, oh, on the budget okay, book. Oh, okay. It does okay. list it down All right. here on okay. the description. Very good. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I will include that as part of the description. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Um, and the only other thing under maintenance was some additional equipment. And again, that's just replacing and trying to keep up with the equipment that those now what, gentlemen what's use. the difference between equipment and capital versus equipment in, in that Operation. we're putting in our operating the equipment on the capital side <coughs> uh, we talked about years ago we used to phase it in you know have a, a sheet so say like 2019 came along we knew that this had to be switched out and then when the budget crunch team and all that went to the wayside, mm -hmm. we're trying to get back on that track. So we don't have to go to tra to the commissioners to transfer money all the time? Exactly. Is that what, oh, okay. Exactly. Okay. So with the capital funding, you know, and, and getting that put into place, it will alleviate all of that. And it okay. would also alleviate us relying on the fund balance in case we have a terrible year, or, you know, a cold year with, you know, we have heating oil and all that. <laughs> we'll be back up to par. Like I said, we still have some vans that are 1988. Right. I mean, you know. Aren't we in this spot now with power? I just got my power bill and I about fainted. Um, I, I will tell you, when you look at your electric bill and look at the average degree days from last year to this year, and you're looking at, on some of them, about 10 degrees, that's a substantial uh, difference. What in, happened yes. to our solar that we were going to be putting in? Is I that, that, is that you know, a couple months ago? Actually, it's coming along. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It is. I was just talking with them this morning. So, yep. Um, I'd say probably in the latter part of spring. Okay, well, that's good. Wow. We had to work through some issues. It's the first um, solar in the town of Centerville. Oh, so okay. we had to go through some hurdles to get the <laughs> ordinance. In, in, in Centerville. First uh, solar um, in the industrial town. size one oh. in the town of Centerville. Okay. We had to yeah, is that going to do, that'll do Queen Anne's County High School and Centerville Middle School? That will do Queen Anne's County High School, Centerville Middle School, and we'll have enough to do some net metering off of another school, off. probably Kent Island High School, because okay. that's one of our larger right. consumers. <laughs> and I mean, there's no there's a no escalation clause on this contract, so I mean, it stays flat the entire 20-year right. right. commitment. Yeah, that's great. That is great, yeah. I'm just curious, where is it located? Do you know where the tennis courts are? Or which oh, I'm sorry, between Centerville uh, Middle School and Queen Anne's County High School. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, Good behind there is like a little hill of five acres that we've had like soybeans planted on that we're making like maybe $100 a year off yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, this is sub going to substantially cut down our cost on um, electricity um, with this. So. It's a site. It's actually a really good site. We're going to have vegetation around it so that it doesn't stick out like a, you know, a kind of a sore thumb. So we've been working with the town uh, planning and zoning for that also. Okay. It's a good project. Not too much planning. 
Gotta make sure that the sun gets to it. Well, yes. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, to answer your question, Captain Kelly, you will see some increases in electric for this, yeah, this past month. And you can really look at the be. ones in Tel that are uh, geothermal compared to the ones I that have boilers. Yeah. I have geothermal and solar, and I was, it went down. Oh, yeah. My power doubled from mm -hmm. this, this weather. And I immediately thought the school system, how we, lame is that? I will say <laughs> we <laughs> had oh, no down. problems with frozen pipes. Um, no, we had one issue at Graceville Elementary School, and that was a construction issue. But, I mean, it, as cold as it was, we were really was, lucky. We're for compared so to other school systems, we're very fortunate. Yeah. So. Okay. Any other questions on maintenance? And we move over to fixed charges. Um, and the <coughs> majority <coughs> of these numbers are calculated based on um, what salaries are in included in the budget. <coughs> so retirement costs, um, we get a number from the state that tells us what that's going to be, what our normal cost is going to be. And then there's also, in addition to the normal cost, there's also an administrative fee. Um, Social Security is calculated, workers' comps calculated. Um, <clears throat> health insurance would be the biggest number there, which is a, we're estimating a 4.5% increase in health insurance. And then for all the additional um, staff that was initially included in this budget, uh, included them at, at a family plan level. Um, so th we'll be able to reduce that. So who does who who sees that increase? Is that going to be half to us and half to the teachers, or the whole four point five is is on us? Us as being the board of education. Both to pay the increase. Both um, for EPO individual currently we pay a hundred percent of that cost. So for that group and how many of how many do we have doing that? 255, I think, was the last Check. number. Yeah. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay. So we pay 100% of that cost. Right. So that entire 4.5% will be on us. On us, okay. For the rest of the people who are in the EPO plan, right. so parent and child, husband and wife and family, right. they pay 10%, we pay 90%. So we would be picking up 90% of okay. that 4.5%. Okay. And then on the... PPO side for individual it's 8515 and then for everybody else it's 7030. Okay. So we would be picking up seven, those amounts, yeah, right? So okay. It okay. varies depending on what type of coverage. Right, people exactly. Have. Exactly. So but we estimate that um, or I've estimated that that's going to be about a seven hundred and five thousand okay. dollar ticket um, for the active employees. And then for the retirees, um, which is on the next page, that's going to be about $150,000, $148,000, item. And then the rest of that unemployment, those are all calculated figures. So that is essentially the operating budget. So if I get you to flip back, if you will, to page... Five, which is a summary of everything that we just went through. And if you look in the um, bottom right hand corner of that page, you can see the total request is $95,629,000 is our total request. And then if you flip back to page three, which is the revenue page, um, you can see how that's broken down by county, state, and then other. So essentially, if we were to leave this as it currently is, which we're not, um, we would be requesting from the county an additional $3.9 million over maintenance of effort. Which is $2 million more than last year's request. Which than is? last year's request. I'm sorry, I didn't hear Two million two hundred and sixty plus more than last year's one point yes. six request. And 
a portion of that is increased doing business costs, but yes. other things as well. Okay. So is there any other questions on the current expense part of this budget? Not hearing any. Well, so, but let's just, um, and I know you're probably getting ready to go to this place, but so I think that I heard today us just, you decide that we want to take anything associated with the virtual academy out. Yes. Am, I, am I right? I think we're going to have to. Yeah, okay. So that takes away almost 300,291, um, which is still in that 2.6 that um, Ms. Harlow was talking about. So we want to take that out. We were able to narrow some of the positions for the teachers, so at least two of those we were able to narrow. Um, and I didn't hear narrowing of any other. So I'm trying to get a handle on. We, we had a debate over the nurse at right. APA, and we never made a decision on that. Right, but that, that's still in here, that fifth. Right, that's what right. I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Right. But we didn't continue that conversation as what we're going to do with that. Well, everything's still in there. We haven't cut anything out of this request yet. We haven't really cut anything yet. except we said about the virtual. Mm -hmm. Virtual, which really wasn't a part of that 13 positions. That was a category. The 13 positions was two maintenance people, eight classroom teachers. Actually, it must have been 15. <coughs> two assistant principals, PIO uh, reorganization, driver trainer, and a nurse. I um, recommend we remove the nurse request and the assistant principal request from APA and leave things there as they are. We have a process that the nurse <coughs> is, it is covered. Is it principal oh, <coughs> I thought it was assistant. an assistant. Yes, that. What page are you on, Sharon? Um, I'm just looking at my notes, honey. Oh, okay. I'm okay. not on a page. Because I'm just looking at the new position notes. Well, I just want to make something clear, like because if if you look at before, you know, I, I agree with Sharon about not making the the APA a principal versus right. the program manager. If you look at that change of title, we're we're essentially adding twenty seven thousand dollars to change a name. Yeah. And I think that that's just not conducive to 17. doing what's best oh, for the here. well actually it's 27 because it would be a steps and cola are on there also right 17 was just the uh -huh. the position position yeah, yeah. yeah. okay and <clears throat> in keeping with that so it's 5603 uh, four is actually what the total would be coming out Wait, um, there's going to be fixed charges and whatnot that go. Yeah. I thought that was with that. that. So. Yeah, but you would yeah. take away no. the program manager salary, though. The program the manager delta. salary would have to be added Plugged back in, in yes. to right. instruction, to, and to then take you that, take that. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. yeah, we won't come up with an exact number. Oh, I'm sorry, because no, when I said 56, <laughs> that was a school nurse. So, so yeah, so yes. I recommend no changes to the APA staff at this time. <clears throat> I would agree. I agree. I'm comfortable with the nursing process we have in place. Uh, and there's questions as to recognizing it as a school and not. And based on what we have there now, I don't support an increase in staff changes. I need to ask a question about the SAT all day, the school day SAT, which I'm quite in favor for. However, it was brought to my attention that there are certain amount of minutes that testing, there's something kind of testing minute requirements. Will that affect that at all? So, and, and I'll let Mr. P answer part of that, but we're <coughs> working with the union um, right now. So part of that 2%, you know, less testing has to do with what we agree upon with our union. Yeah. So if our union okay. agrees that it needs to be more than 2.2% or 2.3 for um, eighth grade, I think, then it'll be what we agree upon. And they're okay. still meeting. So we are, we're still meeting, but that, that would take place during the school day. Right. Um, right. I think it's a great idea. I just, I didn't know if that was some kind of requirement with this is an SAT in school yes. or that we're paying for mm -hmm. we would we would We'd yeah. pay for one administration mm -hmm. uh we pay for psat 
We do pay for the PSAT. We do not pay <coughs> for the SAT. Um, so one, <coughs> as you also know, that with the college and career readiness, that the SAT um, is a measurement that's used as part of college and career readiness, depending upon the, the score, as well as um, it also can serve as a waiver of English 12, uh, depending on what the child scores on the English and writing portion of that. Uh, there are many districts that uh, that offer that during the day. That is a uh, I, it's fantastic. That yeah. is a huge it's an incentive. Yeah, it, it is. We did it it's in my incentive. last district, and we captured a lot of students who would not otherwise what, have taken that's that. That's exactly right. I agree. Right. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's in line with what we should be doing. Right. That's hundred percent for the kids. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh huh. I just have a question for you, Dr. Kane. Is on these positions, and you know, keep staring at them. And it, thirty-five positions were presented to you, and you came up with these twelve as your highest priority of the thirty-five. No, we came up with six. I'm you talking about teachers, or more, you're looking at a bunch of other things other than yeah. teachers. The thirty-five yeah, okay, was teacher no, requests. Okay, I'm sorry, thirty-five was just no. Thirty-five was positions total, Eight. right? And you've submitted twelve here. No, six, six teachers. Six teachers. The others two, are other Two things. assistant principals. Right. No, no, I'm talking about that. Okay. So that basically, do you know what the teaching staffs they presented, the principals, they yeah, about? We, oh, I don't this is what they presented. About it. They presented a lot more <laughs> than what we narrowed before yeah, we came to it. you. Okay. So we exactly. narrowed to what we one. thought we might be able to um, justify. Right, Canard, and so even one. and even in narrowing from when we first presented this to now, we've been able to take off two. So as we continue to work with schools and we continue to work with scheduling, we really are looking closely at you know reallocating where we can rather than making a request for new money. Right. Well, my thing I'm dealing is if we're talking about the a the changes to the APA, that a was a higher sense. priority. Of, of all of those things that were submitted to you, all positions, the APA was one of them that you thought was... It was, it was a priority. I certainly respect the um, comments that have been brought about as we had these conversations. And while it absolutely does present an opportunity, you know, for revenue, and it does present an opportunity to bring students into our school district that are not currently there, and it does pre present an opportunity to alter some to offer some alternatives for students we currently enroll. If this is not the right time for it, we have to weigh those. That's part of the work of this group. We have to weigh the priorities that we've set. And it sounds to me as if this one is not making the t one of the top priorities at this time. So the anchor points was where we were going to have a lot of the virtual academy. Okay, so I can, then it's so it easier been, to see that was why we two, don't need right, two, that two, two positions. That, right, that would have been two teachers. Could remove. So it was really eight, including Virtual Academy. Take Virtual Academy away. We're at our six that we pared down from the 35, down to six. Down to Kennard four. and Stevensville Middle have been taken care of, and we're at computer sciences at Queen Anne's County High School, English slash social studies at Queen Anne's County High School, and Ken Island Elementary, a position, Centerville Middle, middle a position. Correct. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Anchors point. That, that's another reason not to up. Anchors point position. wasn't in there. I'm looking at. I'm no, looking she's, about she's that. talking, talking about, about Anchors or, Point because we're talking right now about getting rid of the Anchors Point initiative for, for this right. year. So right. I think it's easier justified if we're not doing the virtual. Mm -hmm. Also, that was an additional. And that was about that was about the virtual academy. Right. So not okay. just then teachers. I, right. 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 And I agree. We changed that. Too. Yeah. <clears throat> oh God, that was really I um I recommend that we leave the teacher specialists as teacher specialists and not make them uh, assistant principals. I I agree. I concur. Jen, thank you. I do too. But we had discussed putting two at Ken Island High School. No, one at Ken Oh, I'm sorry. One at Ken Island, one at, Island, one at Queen Anne's. One at Queen Anne's. Anne's. Right. I support that. No, I don't. Not at Queen Anne's. Not at Queen Anne's. Like at Ken Island. At Ken Island. Yes. 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 
team supports only one. That was my notes of right, because the seemed, old meeting. I think in our discussion we talked about how that was more equitable because one of the assistant principals is right. at, the, exactly. at the extension. Exactly. Right. So that still gives two at the main building and then two up here at the at Queen Anne's. Right. So, and then uh, I'm assuming, at, and, and this is an assumption, so that if that <coughs> annex would not be needed anymore, which is highly unlikely, would then we take one of the assistant principal like and put them in a different position to keep two and two? Or, I mean, how would that work? You, I think you could make that part of the analysis we're going to be doing about moving and getting rid right. of that. Right. I think right. we need right. to look at that because that then, and, again, right. we'll be out of and that's like a hundred thousand problem. dollar right. piece, right? Which exactly, would be great. There's a lot of things I think you could find savings by getting ninth grade over to the high school. So I mean, they were going to be right. analyzing. That. Yeah. How many How many students are in ninth grade at Ken Island High School? Three hundred. Three twenty. Yeah. Three twenty five. Three fifteen. Okay. So there is just not the room at Ken Island High School to have those students there. Not now. Every room is so maybe in the future we need to look to building on to that high school like we are at Graysonville Good. to house mm -hmm. those students mm -hmm. so that they Double have the high campus. school experience like all ninth graders have the high school experience and they're in their school we have one less eight and then we have that principal. that's right exactly and the scheduling issue is a nightmare them trying to get bus, oh, they yeah, have to yeah, yeah, that's right. That take him over because they the have to go over school. there to do certain classes. That's mm -hmm. right. They go over right yeah. certain classes during the so day. So that should right. probably be all a of them are transported over there at the end of the day. Right. So all right. the buses Except are for at, about a hundred or so. Yeah, there's still a so yeah, that's probably campus. something. Not even this should say be a like item. the nurse at Mattapeak Middle has to take on that extra that, right, 300, 300 students kids too. Yeah. A lot of little things yeah, that we could actually yeah. articulate as savings mm -hmm. if you did that. I mean, yeah. Analysis. So that what is, is something that, that we need to think started? about in the future is is adding on a another portion just like we have at Graysonville for ninth grade students. Yeah. Okay. I agree. So where are we? So what did we decide on okay. for that? Keeping Ken Island High School. Ken Island will have one. one at Queen Ken Island. Island. Not. So that's about a hundred thousand savings. And then as far as the other positions, I'm in favor of those four that are still on the table. Which ones are there? Uh, sure. Computer and Sciences yeah, at Queen Anne's Oh, High yeah, School, absolutely. English Social teachers. Studies, Centerville yeah, Middle, and Ken Island Elementary, those four positions. Absolutely. So we actually had 35 requested, got it down to eight, and we have reduced that to four. Absolutely. So maintenance staff, after, we're talking 20 years, Ken Island was built in 98. This is 18, 20 years without increasing an electrician. I mean, really. Yeah, that needs to That's be done. That's crazy. Um, I think we really need to put that maintenance in there. I think, I, I think we need to look at as well as adding on this whole PIO department. This may not be the time to add $168,000 to a department when we're cutting teacher, cutting Cutting, cutting staff out of our budget mm -hmm. for, that directly impact students mm -hmm. and adding a whole department at the Board of Ed. Mm -hmm. I wonder, though, my one thing I thought about this reorganization is if they if we didn't actually create a a person in charge of two people, basically, if we just beefed up the responsibilities and the salary of the person yeah. that would be doing say Geneva's old job or even both positions. it'll still involve or maybe even both it'll still involve increased few increases but not to the tune of 125,000 plus so you want to make a, um, a recommendation do you, so to, are you saying to, you do have a position there uh -huh. that's being paid for mm -hmm. but to up the the, rec the type of person that goes into that okay. you know, make it a higher position okay. with more with the more responsibility that is being done somehow what would that I would be look at that communication specialist <coughs> right mm -hmm. because then maybe hmm. you could actually recruit someone with higher qualifications than what it currently has to handle but not that. 
top director level. But not an additional to director over right. two people. I mean, because essentially right now what is being proposed is an executive position, and I, I can't support executive level position when we can't, that isn't going to directly impact students. I, you know, my first, my first concern is every, every person that, I, that is important is going to, in my opinion, starts at the top with who directly impacts our students daily. And, and adding a, and a whole department, I think, we, number one, we'll, we will create a complete moral discontent or morale discontent with um, staff by saying, we're not sure we can fund, you know, you know, salaries, but we're going to, we're going to add a, a branch to the, to the um, Board of Ed, to the central office. I, I think, I think also we've been brought into um, criticism from the county about adding more um, positions at central office versus out into our schools. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, specifically high level right. executive positions. Right or high cost positions. That's mm -hmm. been reiterated many, many, many times. Sometimes not with a lot of basis and other times with a lot of basis. So, um, you know, just because they thought we did didn't mean we did, but there's times we have. And it does come under um, quite a bit of criticism. The other thing is, but is if we need it, that's sorry. criticism that we have to, you know, deal with. I'm if sorry. We, really, well, I'm I'm sorry. If we really did need it, then uh, it is basically a supervisory position of two people. Right. 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 And I, I mean, other than say Robin, I don't know how many people she supervises, but she's got a, you know, she does a lot of the operational work herself. Right. So when you have a supervisor over just yeah. two people, that is always. Like in federal government, that is right, something it's frowned upon. It's a waste. Yeah. yeah, like that without with that number of people. I'm trying, and I I know that I have seen it on here, Rob, and um, the cost of the the multimedia specialist and the communication specialist. I I thought that they were on here on these yeah. broken down sheets. It, it, it is. is. It's Where is it? Right at the top. Well, it would be communication specialist reorganization oh, okay. is eighteen thousand one hundred four. To bring it up to 60, I think, wasn't it? And then the PIO multimedia specialist is 761. Um, I actually feel that 60 is a little high. Yeah, I'm sorry about oh, that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right now it's a $40,000 mm -hmm. position. Yeah. Um, without going into what each individual one right. of us think we need, if our next position is at 68, I think we're jumping way ahead Way to too 60. far. Yeah. Too far. Yeah. yeah, that's quite and a the whole value. idea you know, is to keep the department. When you look at a percentage increase, in that's level. quite a yes, yes, quite a large. Is there a way yes. that we that's could kind of sort yes. of yes. expedite? Um, maybe Mark too. looking at uh, it's more duties it's and responsibilities in those positions and make a reasonable recommendation on what they should be paid to do that. I mean, is is our resource, human resources able to do that? And so that is that's what we did. Already. We that so we did do that already. So, oh. but what I'm understanding is, uh, leave the structure as it is. However, for the communication specialist, take a look at what that um, person, how we uh, assign responsibilities for that position, and right. perhaps okay. upgrade that position so that we can attract a, a desirable candidate for that. One. That, and I'd actually like to see job description on both in that whole department on what the multimedia specialist Good responsibilities are we gave you that versus but time. now that that was, was based that on the pio the, reorganization the, um, and new positions yeah. this is if we're going to change on so, 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 so when i gave you the i i have it i yeah. just don't have oh, wait it with me. this yeah. one yeah but see that's not going to be indicative of what yeah. this we one? Yes. are talking about yeah okay Going this, one to. Your turn. this is what it was it. going to be <laughs> were we to reorganize the department and duties and titles. Right. So I would, we're yeah. Would the job kind of still be the same? off on this sum. That's what we need to do. Would the communication specialist and the multimedia specialist, would they be the same? Keep in mind those are different names now. Right. So we're just going to take out the multimedia specialist okay. altogether. Okay. Right. No. So, what do you mean we're taking out the multimedia we're specialist? We're not. We're eliminating that. No, we need a multimedia specialist. 
Okay, that's talking not about, I'm talking about, about getting a PIO the person yeah. over time. I'm multimedia oh, staff. I was talking about the, the director of PIO. That position is, what we is were called PIO, PIO coordinator. So we're, yes, we're limiting yeah, PIO. We're li w which was never created yet. Right. Right. My recommendation we is we leave the have. titles the way they currently okay, well, are. So we, cu okay, we currently well, I, let have Let me make myself clear. What I was recommending we is, have an interim is we do not have a PIO oh. director in charge of two people. We keep communication specialists. We keep multimedia specialists. Mm -hmm. My recommendation is to eliminate PIO as a director which was creating position. an executive position of $125,000. Okay, so let me tell you what we have now okay. and what I believe you're asking, just because I think there's confusion. Okay. So we currently have a PIO coordinator and a communication specialist. The recommendation was to upgrade that PIO coordinator to a director and then keep a communication specialist and add a multimedia specialist. Correct. What you're asking is that we eliminate that multi, because that was the new one. No, I, no I don't agree with that. I, I, I think, don't agree with I that. I think um, I'm looking at, what? we don't have an organizational yeah. chart from 2016, but we do clearly have a list of all of our positions. Mm -hmm. And they start at the superintendent level and they go all the way down through all of our departments. And on the last page of that, our communication, our Office of Public Information listed a public information officer, which was a position that we haven't decided to get rid of or change the name, but that was on the table and a communication specialist. My recommendation is we leave it the way it was. And you have two org charts there. You have Prior an FY17 to and you have a FY, I'm sorry, you have a FY18 and you have a FY19. That was the proposed one. But those are so different what, from what we started with The FY18 is what we have now. A and, and that shows an I interim know. position and changes to the department as it was before Ms. Harrison left um, and before any changes were made. It shows Prior it did, to, yeah. we had a public information officer and a communication, and a communication specialist. specialist. My recommendation is we leave this department intact the way it was, but we examine the duties for each. Yes, that's what I was And what I if we <laughs> determine that there's an improvement needed in any pay for the communication specialist, because that's the one that's on the table, okay. then we can discuss that. I'm um, objectional, object, I object to the 60. Which I feel is, that's too high. Eliminates the media specialist, the multimedia specialist. That's what I'm saying. Right. Which I'm was a change. Saying. Right. Which was a change. Right. So we're just that leaving we it alone. Leaving it alone. Yes. Title-wise, but in but the budget, we jobs. have to take that out of the budget because it was changed in the budget. Exactly. Yeah. But exactly. let's be clear, that's not what you were saying. Oh, yeah, I, I just wanted to upgrade that position that's to accommodate the extra duties that you felt were going to be mm -hmm. done by another whole Correct. position. Correct. So it's not <coughs> leaving it alone right. because <coughs> come your up conversation was that the, in the salary may be increased. Right. Is that what you heard? I think but so. not to the tune of hundred. Right, right, right. I, I kind of understand what But we also, saying. in that scenario, talking are talking thing, different, different job titles. titles. Yeah. yeah, right. The titles are. We're just talking confusing. different titles. So I think we're <coughs> not. And you can call um, it whatever you want. Yeah, to, it. to me, it doesn't matter. But <laughs> I get it what stays, you're saying. The titles stay the same. Stay the same. Doug, and can you ask a question? Are we? We're we're undertaking a salary study, compensation classification. That work should be done in three to four months. Is that an adequate time frame? Three or four months? No, for no. the budget. <laughs> <laughs> no, for for this for the, question. Yeah, I mean, if 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 we're yeah, gonna, gonna we've got to make some decision about what to pay that position. Right. The communication for budget. Oh, okay. Position. Right. Gotcha. And and that work was done. Yeah, that's so, right. So that's right. what I'm saying. Right. That's okay. Right. Okay. The work that work okay. Was done. okay. That number will come down, but so it so disappear. <coughs> prior to any discussion, it was in the forty range. And on the table but with the changes, it was in the 60 range. And are we asking okay. those job duties be reevaluated in the package that you gave us? And then we can come up with a salary yeah, level. Let's see what they come up with. That's what I said. Yes. So these will go away. Oh, it's not a complicated job description. Director of um, 
community relationships and communications, but the titles will stay the same as they were in 2016 and most of 2017. They just recently changed. We're going to use the keep the driver trainer. Yeah, I was okay with all that. Yeah, I was fine with that. So I think that's it for the new positions. Two maintenance people. Looking at. So, so did, did we say that? We said electrician, so we're all right with the upper, um, the carpenter as well? Yeah, the two positions I'm in okay that department. I'm okay with the two maintenance yeah. positions yes. and the driver trainer. Yeah, I was okay with oh, that too. So we got electrician, carpenter, transportation, driver trainer. Right. And then, and then the teaching staff, additional chief, teaching staff. Oh, okay. Staff. I just didn't know <clears> what it was. <throat> okay. I have a question. Um, I just asked Dr. Kane about it. Um, if anyone saw this at the back of their paper here, I did for the um, position as deputy superintendent. <coughs> if you could explain that to us. <laughs> yeah. So we didn't get to any of this. No, we did. <laughs> we did. I gave to you last time. Yeah. So the recommendation here is to change the job title, not the job. Um, the responsibilities or the salary, all of the things that are, are right now stay the same. And that is out of respect for the work that actually is done um, and the experiences that um, that person in that position has had. So the, the, the situation in Queen Anne's County is similar to situations in some other districts that have a deputy um, superintendent. And that is that he works right hand with me and he speaks on my behalf. And if I'm not there, he He's not, he's there. Um, so it is really almost like a co-responsibility in addition to all of the academics for curriculum instruction and special education and um, counseling, student services and all of those kinds of things which are included in that. So it's not a fiscal impact but it changes the job title. Does the job title affect how the state views us? No? No. no. Okay. And okay. in here, again, again, it has direct support to the district's 15 schools. It should only say 14 schools. Um, so my only question is, in looking over, unfortunately, our sister counties do not do a good job of producing a um, organizational chart or putting it online. So I was at a little bit of a disadvantage and had to go out into the bigger state of Maryland. And... I see deputy assistant superintendents um, clearly under an assistant superintendent. So if we're going to under uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, under superintendent, um, you look at FY nineteen under superintendents. I'm sorry. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Um, Montgomery County superintendent of schools, and then under that um, a deputy and then um, some officers, <coughs> and below that, directors. Why would we put our assistant superintendent or deputy superintendent on the same line as our directors, as opposed to out as direct support to you? Um, Oh, see, I see what you're saying on the on the organizational it's all on chart. The same yeah, line I had across the, same the question. board, and it should it should it really it should, should have been be up there, mm -hmm. out there. It from should be like you, you have Jackie really there. It should be here. Well, and, and they may no, not. It, it really should fall or underneath there its you own go. self. Right, its and own then, self, but so directly that, to you. you. So the reason that it's there, like it is, is because all of those positions report directly to me. Right, and I right. didn't I'm put okay him over that because that. those directors. Yes, I'm don't okay with that without him. that line to gotcha. the directors. Oh, okay. But I felt that that was not in keeping. I would like to see it's in keeping organizationally about regarding who reports to whom. Yes, who. yes. Right. But we can do that with lines and still show yeah, I, um, I think that that needs differential. to definitely go under there and, and it's not sometimes here. reflected in a larger box. A and some yeah. people, some counties well, do I just, have their I think that line of line of communication of set up different. Right. I don't have a problem with how you determine right. that. So a lot That's of times in larger districts all mm -hmm. of those folks do report to the to him and to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Directly right. through him. Through him. I don't care that we 
leave that I'm, I'm fine leaving leave that up to you right, yeah. right. but I felt like it was not in keeping with the position to be this along the line of a director vote on anyway no. it's your decision no, right. Right. I, yeah. was, so, I yeah. just wanted to yeah right give you but because there was a job description and a change yeah, there's um, some money yeah. involved okay. I felt that that needed some discussion. I guess this would be an off topic of budget yeah yes well, well there was money involved well I brought it up because I keep pulling it out of my not not changing his name from deputy it doesn't change salary or anything like like that. That's, 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 that's just his cola. That's just his stuff in cola. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's get back on to the budget part of this. All right. So we had no change to APA staff. Uh, one AP at Kent Island High School. We keep the electrician, carpenter, driver, trainer out of maintenance. We're going to do 4.0 uh, teachers um, in the multiple schools that we named before. And no program manager to principal for anchor points. Um, take out the multimedia specialist. Keep the same titles that we have currently in PIO office and rework the responsibilities of the communication specialist. Right. Okay, and then the maintenance man, did you mention? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. And uh, the driver trainer was mentioned. Yes. Okay, that's everything. That was all under, mm -hmm. under maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay, the one question I have is um, hourly wage improvements. Throughout here, there was a lot of different places where we had well, added. I, um, it's I almost did have. we need to, though. I, I don't really have a problem with that because I feel like it, it's just something needed. We, we have to at least go to the commissioners and ask for that. I mean, we have to stay at some point. Our salary change? Well, I had yeah. something. I, I did have a question about mileage or air. Um, Hold on, Beverly's asking about. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, go ahead. While I'm yeah, I'm, I'm what, um, what Jen was saying. Um, my question is, are there any areas here that we're having a hard time hiring people for? And I know we are no, for substitutes, are. Yeah. but how about everything else? I mean, that way we can justify the upping the right. salary for whoever we're having a hard time getting. Basically, would be. Well, I think we're addressing all the hourly people that we're having difficulty uh, recruiting and the rest of the folks are collectively bargained and we're trying to approach that through the compensation and classification study. Are we having any trouble getting people for those positions? For, for uh, some of the, the collectively positions. bargained positions? Yeah. Some of the of hourly, course. some of the hourly. Yeah. I mean, the to an extent where we could justify that to the commissioners. The hourlies we are addressing. We have hourly five-hour para positions that are tough to get. Um, home hospital teachers, substitute teachers, um, some bus driver assistants. Um, Another one. Tutors. I, th I think tutors, the big, right. Yeah, the Title One tutors. The tutors and the five-hour pairs. We get them, but they turn over quickly because they're going to. They find another job that they're going to. Real fans. It's it's, it's difficult work. Quickly. It's uh, it's very it's very challenging, and it takes a certain kind of a person with a really big heart. Uh, so, the substitutes in the home hospital teachers, we're just having trouble getting them to commit to doing those jobs. And, you know, unemployment is at a long time low. It's just a difficult time in the labor market. So we've got to appeal to them and, uh, and we've got to improve uh, our, our offering. Well, then, I mean, my recommendation is that we go ahead with that on all of them. But then if we push comes to shove later, we'd have to look a little closer at it if we don't get what we want right. from the commissioners. Right. I'm okay with going ahead, the initial cut with that, my job, my idea. <clears throat> the initial cut to what? I'm sorry. What? What? Sh what they asked for that and keeping those in. What there. they requested. Keeping them in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. What the staff recommends. So just keep gotcha. it in mind. It might be something we might have to approach later. And gotcha. please remember that many of these folks, like substitute teachers, haven't had an increase in like ten years. Yeah. Right. And they're getting exhausted. Exactly. So we have. It's our responsibility to do something. Well, and just to to get more qualified subs. You know, as well. No, I'm sorry. It's okay. I think I know what I need to do um, for next meeting, which is next, next Wednesday. Wednesday. I'll rework these numbers, put together a new book. Okay. okay. Let you see what that looks like, um, Dr. Kane. Um, I just want to be sure um, that I'm clear on a couple other things. 
move forward with SAT, school day SAT. Yes. Move forward with um, early college academy dual <coughs> enrollment that increase. Yes. We already had conversation about ban uniform, remove virtual academy. Yes. And so the next will um, reflect all of those decisions that were made today. Um, and then, you know, we, we have to start to engage in the unpleasant conversation about what to do, right, so that we are, as we said from the beginning, going to be transparent with the public mm -hmm. should we not get the funding that we need so yes. that people are not blindsided about what we have to do. Right. And I've said on yep. more than one occasion, we are going to find $1.4 million in this budget without it affecting positions. That was my question. Say Are we again. going Say to be able will to not find one point four million dollars in this budget without it impacting positions? There's not enough materials uh, or programs to cut. So actually, am I safe in saying that MOE will not satisfy our salary increases that we expect we're going to health care? Salary, right. Ola, right. Steps. Exactly. Exactly. And, and we're talking Greg, about a minimal level. We encountered here. that last year so as we well. We may need 1.4 We were short as well. Somewhere of salary ideas of money reductions or because of MOE. Like your pay to play. Only like being at the level it works. <clears throat> I think that, yeah, if, if next week, Dr. Kane, if you and your staff could come up with what yeah. you would think is yeah. your you know, places that we would have to, and I know we were given that in the presentation on the slide, but I think that there might be even be more needed. Yeah, there's only four things. So, yeah. right, so if you, right, and so, honest to goodness, we have gone through and gone through and looked at what right. you did last year, and we had a long list of things, and we say, okay, so we've taken care of this, we've taken care of that, right. and so the only things, and these are so minimal when you right. start talking about right. you know fifteen thousand dollars from pay to play you know right. for a dollar right. or something right. like that that's right it's so very minimal um you know so we certainly did talk about you know asking um our folks who have epo individual to pay a portion <coughs> of just like everybody else pays a portion of their health insurance that's going to get us a, a certain dollar amount and then the other the only other thing that but we but that's can a negotiated at, item is it not Yes, it is. Right. It is. And so that one we really can't count on. We, ca we can't. No. And then mm -mm. the only thing that was is within our control is staffing. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. FTEs. Mm -hmm. Well, what we could do, though, is, is get some figures on if we made 90, 10. We have that. Or, eight, yeah, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Or what is 80, 20? Mm -hmm. What is, you know. And it, and what's the impact if if... I hate, I don't know if you can estimate this, but what if we just um, had it impact new hires or something? That way there's Again, though, Beverly, those are negotiate. That's something that Mark's going to have to take to, to the to the union to Correct. negotiate. Yeah. So and that's it's not still something not that we make can't. Up our deficit. We're not that's going to have negotiations done by the budget, obviously. Yeah. So. But MOE like, will not. Like we do you know what our, I mean? But what we do with our, you know, our salary increases, we're not going to have that agreed to either. Correct, and, that, and the figure that we used I just was an, an idea estimate. On the numbers. And, right. and Dr. Kane is is very clear. We almost have three things here: MOE, and what it will and will not cover, what our our um, needs for our staff are, and everything else right. that we leave in. Right. And when we start taking out some of the things we've talked about, they're minimal at best, and we're still faced with two of our categories: MOE only covering X amount of dollars not to include or exceed our needs on salary and requirements there. Right. So we're not making up what we need to make up. Exactly. And I mean just And that's all we can tell them. Right. Honestly and, tell right. them that this that's is not going to meet our salary requirements. So I mean, you know, it's I just bring it up just so that we're prepared to start having that conversation. Um, you know we just That's have a to conversation be. we can have if we went forward with the whole budget as modified today. That conversation would be talking points. For the teachers that's to right. come out to exactly. the hearings, for us to come out, right. that's and, right. and that's the kind of stuff. And so you know, they're, they're planning to come. They're, out. they're they're waiting for us to have agreement here about what you want to present to commissioners, and then 
I think our biggest impact to get people out at those budget meetings are exactly if, if we are only funded at MOE <coughs> and these are the things that are going to have to get cut. That's where you're going to get the population of teachers, communities, you know, taxpayers, everybody's that will impact, make the biggest impact on, on, on people coming out for those budget hearings. Unfortunately, well the budget hearing is after they've made their determination of dollar amount. But they change it. They do change they it do. based on the budget Yeah, they do. But they have they've had in the past where they've had like a big turnout and they've realized the impact that their budget is going to have on education and, th and they have increased it in the past. Um, not for a few years, a, a dramatic, drastic amount, but you know. The, it, the libraries last year. Yeah. The libraries came out in they four did four. Do yes. that. Right. They, they got did funded. Do that. Yep. But I really think the last <laughs> time, other than 400 two years ago, the Mr. last P. time was the fight between the 10 million and the 6 million. That was for that. So Robin, do you think that there's a possibility that you could get those to us by Tuesday so that we could look at them sure. by time we show up next week? Absolutely. So that we can start looking at where we might have to make oh, cuts that we don't want to yes. cut, but we might have to. Thank you, dear. For sure. Good job, Robin. Thank you. Get your dancing shoes on. And I'll put together the list of <laughs> cost of doing business items that yeah. we're not right. going to be able right, 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 right. to cut out. So. And we'll have a um, new um, set of, I guess, guidelines as to what the uh, communication job description what those those two positions that we're going to continue to keep well I think what you want because the one just stays as it is the okay. PIO coordinator position you're looking for something for the communication specialist job description mm -hmm. cost cost looking at my papers here yeah it is this is the delayest page that's cookie in the jar in it well actually I don't see that I'm mm -hmm. coming up Sorry. with oh you printed yeah, the director, the which we're not going to. Right, we're not doing that. Have it, and then we've got two of them. Uh, there you go. This one. Mm -hmm. And this one. No, nope. not that, that one. Get rid of these. Beyond get rid of both 16, of them. I can't get And this is the only one we're going to keep. Yep. And then you'll, yeah. the oh, other one, you'll give us a job description and, and of really, that. Okay. It is a chart. Just get rid of that. I have too many papers anyhow. The 2016. Do we need to close? It's what I think we can. That's correct. So the I have a motion to close open session. Website. So moved. Second. All in favor of closing the meeting, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Thank you. We'll see you next Wednesday. Aye.